Hello and welcome. A very good afternoon to you, everyone. We are here for a webinar organized by IQAC Sorot Centenary College. At the very beginning, I would like to briefly introduce our institution. Sharot Centenary College started its journey as a junior college in 1976, which was the birth centenary year of Bangla novelist Sharot Chandra Chattopadhyay. The college was subsequently upgraded to an undergraduate degree college in 1978 with affiliation from the University of Bardwa. It is located in Dhuniakali Development Block of Chinsura Subdivision of Hooghly District in the state of West Bengal. Dhuniakali, in spite of being a rural and agrarian locality, happens to be one of the largest development blocks in West Bengal. The college offers undergraduate honors and general degree courses in humanities, social sciences, commerce, and science streams. The college is aided by the government of West Bengal, accredited by NAC, and recognized by UGC. In the webinar today, the session will be chaired and moderated by our colleague, Dr. Jagannath Chattopadhyay, who is the associate professor and head of the Department of Zoology in our college. May I now request Dr. Chattopadhyay to proceed, please. Thank you, Dr. Kunar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you all know that the topic of today's webinar is COVID-19 facts and facets. This is a very important topic considering current situation and crisis of mankind. The number of infections in India is increasing day by day. So it is very significant for us today to carry on such a good webinar. May I now request Dr. Boshak, our honorable principal of our college, Sandeep Boshak, who is a man of botany. And I request him to deliver welcome address. Dr. Boshak, sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Chattopadha. On behalf of Engineering College, I am inviting the participants in today's web seminar organized by IQAC cell of our college. Everybody know human civilization is passing through an unprecedented pandemic crisis period due to global outbreak of a virus called novel coronavirus. In these circumstances, our higher, higher education is also facing new challenges and we have to modify the modalities in teaching learning processes, transmission of knowledge to restore sound academic environment accordingly. In this backdrop, our college has been engaged in various academic activities differently in order to overcome this kind of hardship. The main aim of today's webinar on a contemporary issue organized by IQSC cell of our college is one of the efforts to carry on such activities in the form of exchange of ideas, thoughts with our students and academicians. Now let me introduce our today's speaker it is my immense pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Arup Kumar Mitro, Associate Professor in Microbiology, St. Javier's College, Kolkata. Dr. Mitro is the founder of Department of Microbiology and Department of Biotechnology of St. Javier's College, a very popular teacher, high quality researcher, writer of several books, and he has published good research articles in journals of national and international repute. He is very much student friendly and always involves students to research activities like working on research projects based on existing facilities and always encourages students participation in Indian Science Congress and other national seminars 
regularly. On behalf of Shorot Centenary College, once again, I am welcoming the whole audience of today's seminar who are participating in this webinar. I hope you will all enjoy his lecture on COVID-19 facts and facets. Thank you. Now I am requesting Dr. Chattopadhyay to take over the charges to conduct the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bosha, our honorable principal of this college for his welcome address. Now, I am glad to introduce our speaker. Today's speaker is Dr. Arup Kumar Metro, Associate Professor, Department of Microbiology, St. Javier's College, Kolkata. Dr. Mitro has done his PhD from University of Calcutta in the year 1995. He is working in St. Javier's College, Kolkata since 1994. Presently, he is working there as associate professor at the PG Department of Microbiology. And he's also working as PhD guide. He has worked on 10 major and minor projects and he has written and edited more than 35 books. He has more than 86 publications in reputed journals. We are glad to have him as our speaker today. Now I would request Dr. Arup Kumar Mitro to deliver his speech on COVID-19 facts and facets. Dr. Mitro, please. Thank you. I think I am audible. So I really am grateful to the principal, Dr. Boshak, and the organizing committee of Shorot Centenary College for inviting me to deliver a webinar. And this is based on a topic which is a burning topic in the present day world. And I tried my level best to gather the information on COVID-19. And hence, I have named this lecture as COVID-19 Facts and Facets. Actually, with my experience of teaching microbiology for the last 18 years, I tried to correlate the different aspects of this particular virus, the damaging aspects, the structural point of view, and of course, its prevention and the precautionary measure, which will help us to survive and see the future world as the world as such is now divided into two types of population. One is COVID affected and the other one is COVID unaffected. Of course, COVID affected will give rise to a new group of population, COVID cured, and the other group will automatically be eliminated following the normal Darwinian principle survival of the fittest. So when I am going to talk about COVID-19, I actually will start with the structure and the systematic position of this particular virus. Now, basically, this is an RNA virus and it is a single stranded RNA which is enveloped and that is giving extra protection having a helical structure it looks like a round structure and it is having surface projections this particular virus is actually seen under electron microscope and it is not a very new virus this group of Corona Viridi was I'm sorry, there, there is some problem. Okay, Cindy. Is it changing? Yeah, yeah. So this particular virus, as I was telling, 
was photographed several times and this covid 19 it has an outer envelope the peplomia having the surface projections in different forms and this is the third major outbreak after the SARS and the Mars. As you know, in 2002, the in 2002, the SARS virus changing. In 2002, the SARS virus was reported from Guangdong in China and it was actually controlled in 2003. So I start my lecture by comparing these two. SARS virus at that time was known as severe acute respiratory syndrome. It, obtained, it was obtained from bat, civets and raccoon. It spread in 26 countries. It obviously entered human through ACE2 receptor and it caused fever, headache, diarrhea, shivering, shortness of breath. And the total mortality rate was 9.6% with little about 8,000 people affected. But this particular virus, that is the SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19, is so-called because it was reported officially for the first time in December 2019 from Wuhan in China and it is still not controlled. Officially it was mentioned that it came from bat. The country is infected. Hardly you find one country which is not infected. About 215 countries. It has the same pathway through SE2 receptor having cough, fever, shortness of breath. And as I was telling, almost one crore people got affected. It is 97 lakhs more than that. But the good point is the mortality rate is less, only 5.06% as on date, that is 26th of June, 2020. So this particular figure shows that the bat cove is belonging to the beta coronavirus and this particular strain is 2B and it is AQ1 as it is seen in this figure. And these are the other members who are closely related to this beta coronavirus that is delta, alpha, and gamma. So there's a question, what is I will be taking up the questions towards the end. Kindly give your questions. I will be solving because many of your questions will be answered during the tenure of this lecture. Now there is a burning question that whether this particular virus is natural or man-made lot of discussion, lot of controversy, but officially, irrespective of US president, the National Intelligence Director's Office of US clearly mentioned that it was not man-made or genetically modified. Of course, China also said the same thing. And WHO went one step ahead, stating that it is not really possible to modify the vital spike protein which is actually touching the gateway of human lung cell and of course in whatsapp or in facebook we found out lot of statement by nobel laureate honjo but he himself refuted that he never said that this particular virus is man-made and so naturally the question doesn't arise but when I say all these things, I must mention certain points of concern. And that is, that is, the virus was spreading like a wildfire. 
but strangely it was limited to yuhan and adjoining place but never reached beijing which was only 400 kilometers away the chinese government claimed that they were unprepared but they managed the disease so efficiently the virus is stable at different environmental conditions from extreme cold to extreme hot it is surviving and playing and havoc the virus is undergoing multiple mutation but as you know with mutation normally a virus loses the virulence but this particular strain never lost the virulence and of course there were corona pandemics as i was telling sars and mars this is really different because it has become a pandemic of global concern now we cannot really blame who but at the same time their responsibility of spreading this virus we cannot deny that because donald trump actually was very much against who he said they are they should be ashamed of themselves because they are like the public relation agency for china now why Dr. he said all this because they didn't raise any mr please can you hear me dr mr yes can you hear me yeah i can yes, hear I'm you i'm sorry to disturb you because uh, uh, there are many comments in the audience box that they cannot see the slides the full the, the the whole of the slides the half of the slides are visible actually so i would suggest that you please uh, uh, go in presentation mode open the slides in presentation mode acha please try that i am sending the slides am, in now screen. now can can it be seen okay no only half of it so can it be seen only now? half of it can be seen no no half of it only we can see but half i am in presentation it. mode i don't know what's happening uh, now now sort of we can sort of uh, see, but, see the full uh, uh, slide so can we can we continue like this uh, this is at least some word better okay. than what we were seeing earlier okay can you continue like this okay can i start yeah yeah please please okay. sorry for this interest so i was telling that role of who remains an important issue because they claim that this was just a zoonotic disease from animal to human they ruled out initial human transmission and much later in january they only said that human to human transmission was there and they never really saw the chinese government from stopping the international flight they continued and thereby it spread to european countries they carried out human radiology lab visit but by the time the damage is done so definitely it was somewhat a hush up story propelled by the chinese government which actually was supported by who and at the same time it was clearly stated that it came from that so we also know by this time about three different strains of corona virus has been extracted from bat and stored in the same virology lab so i leave it on to you to understand that maybe it was a natural story but somewhat human interference cannot be ruled out now there have been several sars virus to be specific sars mars and the sars cov2 or cov19 if we see that this particular genome organization more or less the orf open reading frame 
the small fragments of RNA, they remain the same. But at certain point, there are specific modification in the accessory protein G, namely in this three, position three and position eight, where it is clearly varying from SARS cov and MARS cov virus. So naturally, it was a sheer case of mutation, which actually started to spread like a wildfire all over the world. Now coming to the structure of this particular virus, like the coronavirus, it is having an outer coat where there are surface projections and these surface projections include these surface projections include the spike lycoprotein S, the M protein, the AT or hemoglobin in esterase, and the E protein. There is a single strand of RNA complex with N protein inside. Coming to the single stranded RNA genome of this COV2 virus, which is about 30 kilobase length, and it is having specific sequences, having specific function from the 5 dash to the 3 dash N, which included, very strange, a plant-like protein is there, papine-like protease, which is protein digestive enzyme present in plant. It is having the other protease followed by the replicase, helicase, endoribonuclease, and most importantly, the spike protein, which is so important because it is binding to the human host cell. Coming to the actual types or subtypes of COV2 virus, actually, you can clearly see there are about 12 different strains as reported by the National Institute of Biomedical Genomics in Polanyi. In their paper, they clearly showed that there were the BAO strain and the B subtype. There were four, namely the B, B1, B2, and B4. O is the single strain, A7, A6, A3, A1, A2, and A2A. These are the A substrains, and A2A really is a bigger subgroup invading more countries. This particular figure also shows that in what way this virus spread. We can see the original epicenter was in China, but then there were many epicenters created all over Europe, in USA, and of course, lately in Latin America, this is a relatively old figure in Australia, in parts of Africa, not all. Actually, when I was seeing this graph, you can clearly see that in those countries where the air connectivity is poor, the spread has also been less. But very strangely, this AQA strain is there in India and also in Australia. But in Australia, it was under control in a lesser time. A1A was in China, B1 was in Middle East and Europe, and of course, A2A was also there in Europe, which came to India much later. B4 was there in USA and Latin America, and that's why now you know by this time that Brazil and USA are the leading countries with respect to the number of people affected and the casualty. The A6 is actually working in Scandinavian countries and it was well 
controlled within a shorter period. Now, we come to the current status. Now, this particular status I am giving as on date. Considering the outbreak date from December 29th until 26th June, the global population is 779 crore. And actually, based on that, they have performed tests in 14 crore people, which is about 1 in 54. As of date, the total number of infected people is close to 1 crore, 97 lakhs plus. Active cases around 39 lakhs. Cases with outcome was around 57 lakhs. This data I am giving today, 12.30 p.m. Total number of recovered is 52 lakhs plus, which is around 91.4%. And the death rate, the mortality rate, which is so important, global rate is now 8.6, with around 49 lakhs people dying. Now let us come to India. It is really very important that our own country has shown remarkable improvement. The total population is more than 137 crore. Tests performed is around 77 lakhs plus, and that makes it 1 in 177. I was following this particular figure. Initially, when it started, it was 1 in 5,000. Now the number has come down to 177. So we are doing a good job in that. The total infected people close to 5 lakhs now, 4 lakh 91,000. Active cases, 1 lakh 90,000. Cases with outcome, little more than 3 lakhs, out of which 94.9% have recovered, which is remarkable. And only 15,000 people died, which is around 5.05%. Now, obviously, we must try to understand why the casualty rate was so less in this country. Maybe because of our climate, right now, humidity was high. At the same time, temperature was high, so the aerosols dried up quickly. Or the droplets dried up quickly. And at the same time, our immunity must have been better in comparison to the world, particularly Europe and America. So people actually saved from this dreadful virus. And at the same time, the A2A strain, which actually was playing an havoc in Europe when it came to India. There has been some micro mutation with which the mortality rate got reduced. I cannot really ignore our own state, West Bengal. Whatever figure I am giving, I, am, I got it from the official site. So the total population is close to 10 crore, and we are lagging in comparison to the whole Indian data, that is 1 in 244 tests we have done. So that way we need some improvement. We should improve. The total infected around 15,000, active cases close to 5,000, cases with outcome little more than 10,000, out of which recovery rate is pretty high, close to 95%, 94%, and Mortality rate is 5.72. So, close to Indian national figure, but lagging, little lagging. But at the same time, we are all positive, so we will see. There has been some health alerts, and definitely these are important. That is, to stay home, 
to get in quarantine and not to roam around without mask, to sanitize at a regular interval, try to avoid more or try to avoid crowded places. And if I am having the disease, I must actually get into quarantine and depending upon my condition, depending upon the symptoms, I have to take some measure with respect to symptomatic relief, that is paracetamol or bronchodilator or simple antibiotics. Now let us come to the entry of COVID-19 into the cell. Actually, this particular virus that is COVID-2 is entering into the cell membrane forming a vesicle and this transmembrane AC2 receptor is actually responsible and it is welcomed by this receptor and of course the anti-AC2 antibody which is present is preventing this particular but considering the cell cycle, actually the SARS-CoV-2 virus reaches the AC2 receptor, it forms the vesicle, then it uncoats the genomic RNA, which is a positive RNA. And this positive RNA gets into the host cell machinery of protein synthesis. And initially, it produces the negative RNA sequence, and then it becomes functional into several positive mRNA, producing the spike protein, envelope protein, membrane protein, and the nucleotide. And as these proteins are being synthesized in the cytosol, they are getting into the RER or endoplasmic reticulum. It utilizes the Golgi endoplasmic reticulum system for getting back their structure and transported by the Golgi vesicle and released outside to the body and affected immune cells. Now, actually, this AC is the angiotensin converting enzyme receptor. And this is the protein sequence you can see in the graph. The angiotensin again is the inactive form and it is activated by the enzyme ready to angiotensin 1. And then this AC enzyme and this AC enzyme convert into an angiotensin 2. And actually, why it is prepared? It is prepared in the kidney. And they are activating the receptors AC1 and AC2, and thereby they are regulating blood pressure. So definitely the renin angiotensin system, though it operates in the kidney, but actually it is maintaining the plasma pressure, and thereby blood pressure is regulated by this AC system. And this particular COVID virus competitively binds with the AC receptor and thereby it is putting a patient suffering from hypertension into sheer doldrums. This particular figure is much clearer. You can see that this angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1, activation of AT1 R receptor and it is responsible for Vasoconstriction, hypertension, fibrosis, all these damages. It less clean is involved in activating a D2R receptor as a result of which the curing effect is low and at the same time this continuous reaction which will lead to the production of angiotensin 1,7 to AC2 resulting in the degradation of this angiotensin molecule will continue. That is the mass reception is modified. So what I'm trying to say is that this particular AT1R receptor damage is inducing all these changes in human body followed by the COVID-19 virus. 
this figure is not created to show how the lung injury is initiated. You can see here the S protein, which is the SARS cov and the SARS cov 2, both are binding to SD2, and then they are getting into the host cycle and thereby it is replicating, not getting into SE2, but getting into the SE. AC receptor getting into AC2 receptor, resulting in activation of the angiotensinogen tensing 2, activation of AT1R, and causing the acute lung injury. So, this is the flow shape or sequence of events by which the lung injury occurs mainly through AC2 part. This is another very interesting slide where I have actually shown that the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is getting into human body, blood cell, and it is binding to the SE2 and SE receptor. But actually, this SE2 is a protective receptor which is not activated, rather, it gets into this angiotensin 1 and AC1 receptor and thereby tissue injury will occur. As you know, both the pathways are running parallel. So those patients who are succumbing to their infection, they have more activity of this ACE receptor. And those patients who are surviving is because of this ACE2 activity where the antifibrotic mechanism is in place as a result of which tissue damage is raised and the tissue protection is And at the same time, when we see this pathway of SARS-CoV-2 binding, we can clearly understand that the different receptor can be blocked. Like one of them is the TMP RSS2 receptor, which can actually be inhibited and the gateway can be closed. Another possible opportunity is to introduce the spike vaccine, that is subunit vaccine using the spike protein, and actually it will increase the immunity in human host. And at the same time, the spike cannot bind if the particular receptor is actually in the 20 state. We call it soluble SE2 receptor. If the SE2 receptor is soluble, then the initial gateway is closed and obviously it will act as a closed gate. And of course, this AC2 receptor blocker can be an effective trick. So, definitely these are opportunities. And when I say that, this particular down regulation of AC2 receptor actually is causing the problem because they are binding with the virus and AC, which is untouched. The damaging aspect is on. So, what I am trying to say is that normally the damage and the protection go hand in hand. But in this case, the damaging aspect goes up because the SE2 receptor is down regulated and the, it is a protective receptor and the SE receptor is up regulated or it is non touched. So, the damaging aspect is more apocryptic signals. And as I was telling you, this transmembrane pro protease serine 2 inhibitor can be one particular treatment. Solubilization of the SE2 receptor can be another treatment, or blocking the surface of SE2 with some antibody or peptide can be another treatment. But of course, I will have some time to discuss about the treatment. So I know what is happening inside my body. But what are the external manifestations that we have now? Shortness of breath, or breathing difficulty, chills and fever, passing pain, and there will be loss of taste and smell along this way. So it is a very common set of symptoms commonly observed in bacterial or other viral infections. So initially, obviously, we used to ignore. But now we become afraid. It is again human nature. The other day I was having some chill. Immediately I was thinking, we will not go. So this is really a problem. 
is people are getting afraid of mortal cold infections. And as I was telling that this particular virus primarily attacks the lung because the ACP receptor maximum is present in the lung, it is acting as a gateway, and this down regulation of ACE2 will introduce or induce pneumonitic symptoms in the lung. As you can see here, this particular CT scan shows a normal lung, and this CT scan shows affected. You can see clearly, clearly the pneumonitic patches present in the lung in a COVID situation. But this concept that it is primarily affecting the lung is not right. Obviously, the lung comes at the first place because of ammonia like symptom, it will be showing severe pneumonitis, but at the same time, it will also damage the heart and the blood vessel because the receptors is present everywhere and it will damage the endothelial cells of the heart and it will reduce the pumping activity of the heart and thereby we say if we give vitamin D3 it will actually act as a stimulator for the heart muscle. So there might be coagulation and as a result of which there will be coronary thrombosis. So very often we see that the COVID-2 patients are dying of thrombosis. The theory of comorbidity states that okay the person dies of thrombosis but actually, this thrombosis has been induced by this virus. People have to understand. And the brain also may show some stroke. There might be conjunctivitis because it is a virus. There will be swelling of the inner membrane of the eye. There will be nasal infection. There is loss of taste because the nasal epithelium is blocked. There will be enlargement of liver. And there will be some symptoms of loss of fluid from the liver and somewhat cirrhosis like damage. And of course, kidney will be affected. And again, lies the theory of comorbidity. Because kidney, if it is affected, then obviously this person cannot really produce the urine and there will be severe acute or chronic renal So obviously, in a person where there is some problem of renal or renal disease, this person succumbs to this infection. And of course, the intestine is affected also. So there will be some sort of indigestion and diarrhea, and that is because of the virus blocking the ACE2 receptor, which is about 20% cases for the time. Now, Now, multiple organ, when it is affected, there will be this problem of oligoudia, acute kidney, hypoxemia, transaminitis, coagulopathy, all these are medical terms. Just forget this. In one word, we say sepsis. Sepsis. Condition in the body where there will be other pairs like bacteria. Now, there are different antiviral agents, immunotherapies, vaccines that were investigated. Some are being used, already we know that RNA polymerase inhibitor, remdesivir is used. There has been also emergency use in all over the world, starting from FDA in USA, from May 1, 2020. There has been also the marketing and use of Navitera-V, which is activated after phosphorylation. It is also acting as a RNA polymerase inhibitor. And there may be some other drugs given, which are given as immune suppressing drugs, like the steroid drug, dexamethasone, which is actually working like a magic in critical immunization. And as I was telling, very recently I was seeing this paper, it came out June 2020, that the heart attack induced by COVID infection and to stop by pulsing application, which is actually protecting the cardiovascular Presently, there has been no vaccine, but of course, the vaccine 
a successful vaccine. All over the world, people are working on vaccine. And this vaccine against COVID-19 includes the live attenuated viral stream, the viral vector base that is protein expressing, that is it is transported to a low infecting virus or low virulent virus. It can be based on recombinant protein or S protein based. It can also be DNA based or mRNA. All these are there, but at the present date, mostly RNA based vaccines are used to use because it will directly get into the cellular machinery and reduce the enhancement or spreading the viral infection. And this particular immune suppressor drug, along with vaccine, definitely will not work. Either you have to go for the vaccine. Or you have to go for the immune This is another very important issue because I know people are working in Kolkata about this convalescent plasma therapy. Actually, this convalescent plasma therapy is the plasma which is collected from the fever patient contains the antibody. And there, as I was showing you in the figure, this antibody will bind with the ac 2 receptor because they are ACT specific and it will not allow the virus to bind as a result of the person can be cured. As I was telling, this I already mentioned that the prevention is better than cure, you have to disinfect the surface, you have to take care of yourself, you have to wear a mask, to maintain social, maintain social distancing, to do stuff in public or speak in public, and non-essential travel is so this was the main topic which I wanted to cover. Now I just wanted to conclude properly before my lecture ever begins. So I was telling that COVID-19 is the third major outbreak after the wars and SARS that is in 2012. The corona virility is changing and its mutation of COVID-19 is MD protein, I showed you in the figure. It came from that, but whether it came from natural mutation or it was human induced, but not proper answer is here. I think maybe future time will see. It is tolerant to extreme environmental conditions. Of course, transcontinental flights could have stopped the disease. It has three types of surface protein, that is protein, H protein, H protein. The genome is that. There are 11 types of liver strain in India, in the UK, primarily because two and other states are there. Morbidity is around 5% in this country. Global contact is 9%. It binds to the AC2 receptor. It is down regulating the AC2 receptor. And it is broadly called AC receptor. But as I was telling you, the ACA receptor and ACA2 receptor they act as like fire and water, oppositely acting. ACA2 receptor is responsible for the down regulation and destruction, and AC receptor actually is rather ACA2 receptor is protective, but because it is down regulated, it will not work, and ACA receptor is protective. Hypertension is there because the mass receptor is activated. Acute lung injury is because of the AT1 receptor hyperactivity and receptor modification can actually bring about the therapy, which is we are still doing. Symptoms are similar to pneumonia in definite cases, comorbidity comes into existence because it can induce concurrent disease, brain stroke, liver disorder, renal failure, which are related to this. And minimize the risk of heart failure infection or heart attack. And definitely, it is a new theory where it should be called it a old mind in new populations. Of course, because new specific therapy is new, prevention is always better. RNA polymerase inhibitor and PTA inhibitor can be developed or in use right now. RNA polymerase inhibitor are being used, and same is used. 
because i am delivering this lecture from my college for their unconditional love and support to the principal of st xavier's college to the head of the department of microbiology st xavier's college and also the computer center because they also have really helped me in coming out from this technical hitch these are some of the selected reference when i was going through this reference i could find 90% of these references have originated from china very strange and i want to thank you for your kind listening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mitro, for your valuable speech. Uh, thank you so much. Excellent uh, deliberation. Uh, may I now uh, declare this session open uh, for questions? Uh, uh, and Dr. Boshak is uh, on the TV now. He will ask some questions. Sir, please. Sir, Dr. Boshak, please. I have already uh, sent uh, in the chat box. Okay. Um, so please, uh, I have uh, three questions. Uh, the first of all, uh, first uh, question to you: uh, What is the link between, uh, sir, between the virus causing uh, COVID-19 and bats, pangolins, and other wild species? Second question: I am uh, just. It was a question. I am from Karachi. First question. Can you, can you repeat the question? I couldn't hear you. Yes, yes, definitely. What is the link between? Can you hear? Can yeah. you hear? What is the link yeah, between? Yeah, I can the, hear you. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, thank you. What is the link between the virus causing COVID nineteen and bats, pangolins, and other wild species? Second is why zoonotic diseases are increasing in the world and third one why viral pathogens travel in search of a new host is it due to habitat loss or environmental changes to uh, associated climate change sir first question if i have got you correctly was this yeah, this particular COVID-19 all through, if you see the coronavirus, it is yeah. a natural population in bat family. It is a natural, yeah. like we have our own microbial flora, the coronavirus is natural flora in bat, pangolin, all these mammals. But whether they are, of course, transmitted between bat, but they are not damaging. They are acting as a carrier. But the moment it comes to human, yeah. whenever they come from animal host to human, they actually yeah. damage our AC receptor or AC2 receptor. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it's due to the receptor binding uh, domain. Is it due to the receptor binding domain? Yeah, definitely it is. It is having the specific domain and its domain. And it has selected a receptor which is present in multiple organs, so it spreads very fast. Yeah. And there has been record. Now it can be there in the aerosol, it can be there in the droplets, it can be there in the water body, it can be there in the wastewater. Only I don't know. It it survives in nature and also it survives in human host or animal host, and it can actually spread through any type of contact to this host. Yeah. And very strangely. It is it is 
having this acute killing property because it is surviving for a long time in yeah. inert surfaces. Yes, yes. Why zoon uh, zoonotic uh, diseases are increasing nowadays? What is the cause? Is it uh, due to the uh, uh, disturbance in the environment? Yes. Why zoonotic diseases are increasing in the world nowadays? Like, just like Mars, Nipah, um, and different kinds of SARS. Yeah, now zoonotic diseases are actually it increases. Yeah, zoonotic disease definitely is increasing because of our food habit on one hand. Definitely we have to blame our food habit. And you see, when we get into the nature, we really do not know how many more viruses are there in the wild. But whenever we are budging into the nature, we are exposing ourselves. So yes. this perhaps is one reason that, okay, let us be happy with the strains which we have. Because if we get into some domain Aggressive where virus. we don't yes. know yes. what type of viruses are there, we we really don't mm -hmm. know. So if they come into play, then it is just I would say the tip of the iceberg. It is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, it is. Uh, uh, we should go for sustainable uh, uh, lifestyle uh, for for that. Uh, so absolutely, that absolutely sustainable development, and let let the wild be happy in the wild environment. Yes, unnecessary. Let habitat. us be happy and with the present habit. Yes, habitat destruction is a major issue. Actually, yes, uh, Doctor Boshak knows uh, better than me. Definitely, habitat destruction actually makes it in both way. You know, human when they are destroying, naturally the wild comes into us and the contact increases. They have right to survive also the viruses. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Sir, uh, I have forwarded uh, some questions uh, in your uh, If there are WhatsApp. any questions, I can answer. Sir, I have forwarded some questions in your uh, okay, okay. WhatsApp. Okay. WhatsApp. Uh, there are some uh, seven or eight questions. Uh, if you okay, please uh, discuss this. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. You may carry on. Yeah, I, I have got it. I have got it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. When we are going out wearing masks, we are sweating a lot due to this hot and humid weather. How does COVID behave in with human sweat? Because often we see that the sweat drips inside our mask. Well, if we, if we sweat, that is retained within us. So in no way, if that particular virus is in our body, it will retain, it will be retained because it will be trapped in the droplet. But at least we will be protected from outside entry. Thank you. And the second question is in which stage we are going now? Definitely, there has been a report today that is a government official has said that is from a government hospital in Delhi. They have said some parts of this country like Delhi and Maharashtra, they are showing third stage that is community spreading has started. Community spreading. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Then next, next question. question. Are people suffering? Yes, I showed you that is angiotensin converting enzyme. So when people are suffering from hyper blood pressure, the damaging aspect of the ACE receptor is high. Because the ACE2 is down regulated, so the production of angiotensin 2 is not there. So the pressure goes out of control. As the pressure goes out of control, there is a possibility of myocardial infarction or blood clot and heart attack. So this is you have, you have the relationship. That. Yes. That's why hypertensive, because the basic receptor that they are targeting is regulating heart blood pressure. So that is why hypertensive patients are more prone to this disease. Uh, of course, arsenicum album, it is a protective, it is a it is a drug, homeopathy drug, but the mechanism I tried to find out 
whatever i have seen i tell you it is a membrane protector so that way it will give you healthy living and it is it can be used as a preventive medicine for covid infection thank you sir virus can transfer through blood transfusion yes there is already this report it can go through any fluid so a person having blood transfusion might go in but the blood content being low that that amount of viral load will be less but definitely it can spread through blood in fact any tissue fluid thank you now it is again a very interesting question when should we reach the peak in india and west bengal well yes, yes. it is still in the log phase so it is really difficult somebody says that in august but i tell you right now the daily affected cases are 16000 so we will be in a position to state that when we are touching the global figure that is 50s to 1 that is out of 50 people one person or out of 50 one person is tested then only we can say we reach the peak at the present moment estimation may be the trend is end of august trend is end of august you are not sure because you never know there are hidden pockets you never know whether these figures are fictitious or genuine and i i have divided the population into two categories covid cure and will be covid eliminated but is covid 19 define the phrase prevention is better than cure as as because I, you see cure will be only possible if there is a proper drug we are now all using rna polymerase inhibitor but the proper drug is not there so definitely we say prevention is better but when i state this this is not my statement we i was studying the worldometer where i have seen that they are showing that okay the people affected the target population affected the people having severe symptom the people cured and the people succumbing to this infection so that thereby i say that there will be two types of people one people will be affected another set of people unaffected and those who are affected in mild on severe and again when in severe a group of people will die other will survive we call it covid winner so these were the questions i believe any other question there are three questions sir there are three questions again okay i'll check i'll check. okay can you give an idea uh, can you give an idea which sequences from rna element of the virus targeted in india developing pcr kit this particular rna sequence i have not gone into the details of the rna sequence but as i was telling that they are primarily targeting the rna sequence responsible for the structural protein that is the the peplomere protein so that sequence is important why covid 19 infection is severe in the developed countries and less developed countries are protected again the history says you see the you know north south divide the north south divide states that the developed world and the developing world the developed world is targeted because first of all they are having low immunity to some extent like you see a uh, people coming from western world to our country or to our city they suffer from diarrhea but we don't suffer yeah so definitely yeah. we are in a better position Yes. second the climate is extreme so it is equally extreme for the virus third is <coughs> definitely say that this particular transport or air travel is more frequent in the western world which they have not stopped totally so naturally the spreading is more and more the spread more will be the infection more death <coughs> plasma therapy plasma therapy is effectively carried out in different countries and there has been some positive uh, treatment i tell you the reason because it is definitely reducing the free ace2 receptor 
and thereby the viral gateway are reduced. So to some extent, it is important. The risk is there. I tell you, the risk is there because that particular plasma may have viral load. And if it is not properly cleared, then there might be some infection. Any other question? So there are two more. I'm just uh, forwarding you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. You are answering so uh, nicely. I am aware of them. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Sir, so what do you think? Some reports suggesting the people with blood group A are more vulnerable. <clears throat> Yeah, this actually this theory came up early. The surface antigen of the blood cells, they are more vulnerable. It has nothing to do with the viral strain. I told you because it is not really bloodborne infection. It is primarily through sputum. So I really don't think that there is any specific way. But to some extent, BCG vaccination has actually developed some resistance in the group of people. But you should also understand that BCG effectivity, efficacy remains still 12 years of age. So whether there is any relation, it is not proven. And this is again a very good question. Infection, can it occur second time? Answer is yes. yes. Because you see, there are viral load present apparently it is a battle going on between your defense system and the virus and temporarily the viral load comes down but again a fresh quantum of virus comes into your body and your preparedness is there you may you may sustain it you may stop it or at the same time you might show some very uh, i would say very low type of infection but it can occur it is not that that adequate antibody will always cure you in future because there has been some record in Iran. I was going through some papers which stated the same person within a span of second month had again developed this infection. No. That's it, sir. And the last question, sir. Will HLA diversity among different ethnic groups plays a crucial role? Yes, definitely. Uh, the, 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 there is a role of this diversity based on which their the future research will say and that might actually help us to understand that African population to a great extent they are less affected than European population and Asian population makes the bridge. So definitely I, 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 I would say there will be more research in future where they will show that the, this antigen whether it is effective in having any role in the entry of this particular viral particle. Sir, there is a question, how we can sanitize vegetables? Yeah, how? actually, okay. yeah, vegetables, vegetables can be sanitized by warm water, simple, by warm washing, warm. probably warm. Okay. is the best way, washing with warm water. Don't use any surface sanitizer on vegetables. Achha. Um, because there will okay. be some chlorine toxicity. There are uh, there are many sir grocery grocery materials. Uh, how how we can sanitize them? Grocery uh, materials, pa packed food. See grocery uh, materials. If it is inside, if it is inside packet, the surface uh, packet you can use any type of sablon disinfectant. It is available in the market or Dettol disinfectant that will sanitize your surface and precisely that what we are doing. No need to sanitize what is inside because there is no specific proof that this virus will percolate through these particular grocery items. Yes, uh, th that is okay, sir. Uh, how can we can uh, sanitize rice, uh, pulses, etc.? See, you no need not do that. You need not do that because you are boiling it. Boiling. And boiling temperature will automatically keep the viral yes. load. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir, uh, for your deliberation. Uh, uh, any question uh, from our uh, inside? Dr. Konar, have you any question? 
yes uh, i am uh, receiving questions here uh, in the youtube comments box and i will put them on the screen uh, the chair and the speaker can see the questions there so i'll do that one by one okay how many how many questions are there okay there are many hundreds of but some of them which the are popping up now i'll put them in the comment box into the screen. for see. example you can see sharmila chakraborty asks yeah. can you read it sharmila chakraborty asks is the is severity it? of the disease, disease and the mortality mortality rate in india affected by the heterogeneous genetic composition of the indian population sir is there any severity of the disease and mortality rate in india affected by heterogeneous genetic composition yes uh, again it is a very good question again i would say that this heterogeneity is dependent on our origin now definitely we all know that part of north indian people they have originated from the aryan race and they have similarity with the original asia minor and similarly the south indian they are also affected and they they are the dravids people now definitely we are not in a position to say it will all depend on the number of ac receptor frequency which is acting as a gateway so you there is due to genetic reason if there is variation in ac to receptor then this particular variation will occur but at the present moment we are not in a position to state that because we see the primary it is affecting equally in chennai it is affecting in maharashtra it is affecting in west bengal it is affecting in delhi so it is a really a point to be dealt upon in future whether this genetic population has variation in ac receptor or gateway and whether they are showing any difference of disease development but actually you are not permitted to do any sort of research involving human subject but i my answer is quite clear if the genetic variation is causing any variation in ac frequency there will be modification or change in the infection rate okay so the, there is another question uh, asked by shumanto de he asks whether a single mrna vaccine is effective all over world or we have to go for specific vaccines for particular population see again again i would say that mutation mutation is taking place in a small fragment 8 8 number 8 and number 3 in the rna segment so that small mutation will not really stop the antibody basically what you are doing you are increasing the antibody load in your body so basically that way it will never really hamper so if i i clearly answer that if a particular vaccine in developing in uk can work in india we we are not in a position to actually go for targeted or tailor made vaccine and herd immunity i could see this question then again it is a very good question today only there was an yes. article in the newspaper herd immunity whether we want it or not we have to get into herd immunity because beggars have no choice very simple we are having a population of say 137 crore and population density is highest in the world so we really don't know if in global context the infection rate will stop after 30% here the infection rate might go to 60 to 70 percent so what does herd immunity means herd immunity means there will be cure only after 60 to 70 percent of people are affected and if in the process many people die then really this herd immunity will be achieved but at the cost of many people okay so the, these are some of the, the questions that popped up uh, uh, in the youtube stream uh, in the comment box there were many of them uh, when your lecture was going on i think you can go back to them 
uh, when the video will be available on YouTube and you can uh, yeah, I think reply it. Yes, definitely. Most antibody will work with COVID. Definitely it will work because that's why the research is on with convalescent plasma therapy. So, uh, uh, may I ask the chair to uh, proceed? Thank you, thank you. Uh, I can see the second question. question. Uh, just, sir, uh, there is a last question. Transmission from rate is very high. Yeah. There is a last question, sir. Oh, sir. Actually, sir, actually sir. the transmission rate is high because, because the load... Yeah. Yeah. The load is high in the droplets, in the saliva, and it survives in nature for some time. And it is selecting a gateway which is adequate in number in our body. So, you see, the load is high. At the same time, the number of gates are more. So, obviously, the infection will be there. Sir, there is a last question. Just just see, the, see your WhatsApp, please. Just last one, one question left. Will you please see the WhatsApp? Okay. Okay. I, I will see. Yeah. Then we can conclude the session. Yes, actually, two step, two step RT PCR is ideal. Two step RT PCR is ideal for proper detection. For proper detection, two-step RT-PCR will be ideal. Extraction of RNA and two-step RT-PCR will actually remove the noises as a result of which the detection will be beyond any doubt. But as because the number of patients going up and up and up, so one step might be adopted because of the paucity of time, funds and Fun, fun, the number of patients exactly. being yeah thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you dr mitra for your valuable speech and discussion now i would request dr khandakar mohammad hasib to deliver a vote of thanks to all dr khandakar mohammad hasib please yeah. yes sir a uh, warm and graceful evening to all our honorable dignitaries it is the memorable day in the history of our institute to host this webinar in an on online platform. No words are enough to express our gratitude to all the personalities in this crucial pandemic situation of COVID-19. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution made by all of you to make this webinar a grand success. I, Dr. Khandagar Mohammad Hashib, and all on behalf of Soros Centenary College Firstly, extend my hearty thanks and gratitude to our honorable speaker, Dr. Arup Kumar Mitro, Associate Professor in Microbiology, St. Javier's College, Kolkata, for his valuable speech on pandemic disease growing throughout this planet. Sir, your valuable scientific contributions have enlightened our minds and shown us a new path. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would also like to pay my sincere thanks to our respected energetic principal of our college, Dr. Sandeep Kumar Bosak, for being the catalyst and pillar of strength to do our best to organize not only this webinar, but also all the events and activities around the academic calendar besides the normal teaching learning processes. I'm also thankful to our president and other members of the governing body for their uh, support and cooperation in this regard. I also need to mention my deepest sense of appreciation to the coordinator of IQSC, Dr. Ramanuj Konar, and all the members of the organizing committee, like Professor Basudev Haldar, Dr. Vidhu Satra, Dr. Sukhrabhuta Bhattacharya, Dr. Pramit Raj, Mr. Manik De, Mr. Samuel Bhattacharya, for conducting this kind of webinar in the recent scenario using online platform with their immense untiring efforts. A special mention is to be needed 
to honor the contribution rendered by the chairperson and moderator of this session, Dr. Jagannath Chattopadhyay, the head of the Department of Geology of our college. I express my feeling of indebtedness to the audience for their active participation and interaction in this regard. Thank you all, Madam and Sir. Here, I would like to add that maybe all the questions you have put forward it could not be addressed due to the shortage of time. Please send your queries to our email address so that we can forward it to Dr. Mitro and you can continue this discussion even after the event is over. I, I would like to thank all the teaching and non-teaching support members of our college family for their continuous support in making this a success. Last but not least, I thank you all, our beloved students, for showing their keen interest in the program by participating. Thank you, my dear students. Finally, I once again thank everyone for making this program a successful. I am ending this program with my own slogan, say no to Corona and to feel good. Say no to Corona and to feel good. Wear a mask and take the healthy food. Wear a mask and take the healthy food. Wash your hand and avoid the crowd. Wash your hand and avoid the crowd. Stay safe in cheerful mood. Stay safe in cheerful mood. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad Hasib. Uh, now I uh, forward this uh, session to uh, our coordinator, uh, I IQAC coordinator, Dr. Uh, Connor. Dr. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your virtual presence. Uh, we had some glitches uh, through the session, mostly because the audio was not clear uh, on many occasions. Uh, however, I believe uh, this has been an enriching experience for all of us. And uh, hope, we hope to see you again in some other event organized by our college.